I am Sharima Bauer, and with me today I have Tanya Burns of the Sixth City Ward. How are you today, Tanya? I'm doing great, Sharima. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. All right, Tanya, we are going to get started, and I wanted to find out, first of all, why are you running for Sixth Ward City Council? One of the reasons that I'm asked that by quite a few people, because number one, I'm a business owner, mm -hmm. so I understand how the functions of the city actually go. Okay. One thing about the city is that the business is not being handled. The first role and the primary role of our current council is to annually pass a budget that is, number one, fiscally re responsible and is balanced. They have failed to do so. They have a duty to work with the mayor and the mayor has a duty to work with the council to get the job done so that we won't miss out on services such as our police, mm -hmm. such as our fire department, our street and maintenance, and just the mere facts of that, those things aren't happening. Not to mention, if you ever attend a city hall meeting, mm -hmm. it's better known as the Jerry Springer Show, and that's unfortunate that we're being known for people to act like clowns because that's not who the Flint people are. Oh, all right, all right. And you mentioned that you are a business owner. Would you like to share with us um, yes. your business? Yes, I am the only minority um, and female-owned uh, ADT dealership in the U.S. Um, I have a business in Chicago or in Illinois, so I'm licensed in both states. Um, for me, I, I'm used to handling um, obstacles and dealing with things that they feel that women can achieve. So usually I fly in under the radar. I'm a hard worker, and I get a lot of respect for that, but I give a lot of respect back. It's, all, it's always earned. Excellent. And so ADT here in Flint and in Chicago. Yes, I have an ADT. It's an ADT dealership. It's like a franchise, um, and it's in, actually for Michigan. My biggest base is out of Detroit area, Wayne County, Oakland County, so it's the entire state that I install. That's awesome. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. So... In terms of this, what issues, Tanya, do you think that Flint is facing? Number one would be the water crisis. Um, I think most people, when they ask about the water crisis, we don't understand how we got here. People don't understand with government how we got here. With the rules, regulations, the EPA, the DEQ, um, our, our council, our mayor, that there were so many checks and balances that failed the people. Uh, they failed the people tremendously to where Science has not cut up, caught up with the fact of loss of life. You cannot give a life back once it's been taken. People lost their lives because of Legionnaire's disease, and we failed at every stop. And we're still failing at every stop, and there has to be a change. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so then I think that's a good segue to uh, that our next question is, what is your platform? My number one platform, which with the city of Flint, you can name a lot of things that we need That's to begin. Right. Right. Um, but the first one is it has to be water. It has to be water because we still cannot use our water straight from the tap. Okay. We have to figure out, figure out what is our primary water source that we're going to use, GLEWA, KWA, mm -hmm. if we're going to provide our own water source. But we first need to fix the problem, and we haven't done that yet. Yeah. Fixing the problem is not going to pick up bottled water. It's not having a filter on your faucet. Yeah. I question the fact that if you're getting from the line, from the, the street to your home fixed, that doesn't fix the problem from the, your, your, the inside of your home and from all the pipes that that water travels through. The problem is still there. I don't feel personally uh, convinced me, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't think so. I just don't feel that that's something that's adequate. We had that problem for a long time, and the pipes are deteriorated. And when we take a shower, when I personally take a shower in the chemicals, I mean, your skin burns, you're, you're getting rashes, people, their hair is falling out. Um, the water is, it smells like chemicals. I just recently got a filter from Prince of Peace Church from Pastor Hawkins Church, which he gives them out on Stevenson Street. It's a big difference. I mean, I think everyone should be able to have a chemical-free, clean water shower. That's the basis that we fight and we see the little commercials on TV at late night that people in third world countries are asking, can we help get them fresh water? We're Flint and we're in the city and we're a staff and we don't have good water. Right. Right. And so it, then just to recap, the problem for you then is that we have not been able to choose the KWA, GLEWA. What is the that? That's one of that's a huge issue. That's one of the issues that the council is facing. Yes. Um, I'm told that they don't want to make a decision, which they haven't. And they want to pass it on to the next administration so they don't have to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say, hey, I'm putting my hands on this. But someone mm -hmm. has to. 
So that's the problem. The problem is we don't have clean water for me. It is their responsibility and their job to say, hey, I'm a council member. I have to make a tough decision to figure out what we're going to do with the water. Somebody has to make the decision. Right now we're in limbo and it's not good because the state is suing us. The state of Michigan is suing us because we can't make a decision. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so how does this also tie in with uh, economic development uh, for you? Economic development for me is really important. Economic development to me should not, because I'm a small business owner, um, should not just be downtown development. I love downtown. It's beautiful. When people come from Texas, they come from California, Illinois, Indiana, when I'm doing business, I take them to downtown. Yeah. I show them and highlight all our beautiful things, and I call it Tour La Flint. Yeah, Tour La Flint. <laughs> Tour La Flint. And I show them. We walk up and down the, the streets. We start off at Cafe Remo, or we'll go to 501. We'll mm-hmm. go to mm-hmm. the Corkscrew. I, I show them the nice things that they don't see on the news. Yeah. I send pictures yeah. of Whiting. I take them, ride them mm-hmm. through the Cultural Center, the FIA, the Flint Institute of Music, yeah. to show them that we have beautiful things. Yes. And if it's summertime, Michigan is known for its beautiful parks. Take yes. them to a park. Mm -hmm. I keep two picnic baskets at my office, and hey, we want to talk. We can go have a picnic lunch in the park. Very nice. And so that's one way that you're able to utilize our city's resources as well as show them off. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm like Flint's number one fan. And it's funny, when I go to my conventions, they're like, don't talk to her about Flint. Yeah. Don't Just just don't. You'll talk about nothing else. Unless it's something positive and I catch them going, Mm-hmm. Don't don't talk to Tanya about don't say <laughs> don't don't say anything negative right. because I, I I'm very um, I'm passionate right. because I care mm-hmm. I could have put my business any other place and I didn't I bought a building downtown Flint okay. I rehabbed it I gutted it out and then I stood back because I could see it from the front to the back and I took out everything okay. and I thought God this is a huge project but I believed it took my money and I invested back in the city. And we have to start supporting our own city in economic development. And I began with myself. Charity begins at home. And it began with me. So I'm not saying for anyone to do something that I haven't done. I've done it. And I believe in it. Is the realm uh, of economic development for you, is that in entrepreneurship then? Or are there certain industries that you think we should be focusing on? Well, one of the things I said, I believe Flint has a great infrastructure. And we have to look at that because we had General Motors, we had Chevy, we had DuPont, Fisher Body. Yes. I think I might be dating myself now. No. But those are... <laughs> and Buick. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm Buick, absolutely Buick. Too. Yes. <laughs> Buick City, as a matter yeah. of fact. Mm-hmm. So when you understand that, we had the great infrastructure. Right. We're actually licensed, or we're actually zoned for residential, yes. commercial, and industrial. Yes. Why are we not utilizing that? Right. Flint is a plug-and-play city, which means yes. to me, plug-and-play, mm-hmm. we can actually come and take a business, right. build it right on the old site of Buick, and there's a lot of that that's going yes. down all the way across there, industrial. Yes. We can take it and plug it in, and we're ready to go. Yeah. Drop it, build it, boom. And anything that's built, we can get it out by the highway, airports, which are build, built. We've got the trains. We can get a product built and get it shipped out. Okay. So that's a plug and play city for me. And we should be advertising that on the city council. Excellent. Excellent. The plug and play city. I, that's, that's a very interesting concept. So then in terms of you know, in a position, your position on police and crime, How does all of this, uh, where are you, first of all, at your position on police and crime? Police and crime is something I'm very passionate about, and I think we have to make sure we start bridging some of the gaps in our community. Mm -hmm. We can all cut on our TVs and read the newspaper or look on Facebook or look on them live, and we can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Community policing should be number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we need to make sure that we have enough police on the street. Yeah. Anytime we deny the people who put their lives at stake, and I'm not willing to do that, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. then they deserve to have a wage that's fair so that they can take care of their families. Mm-hmm. When the police are calling, they're calling to that 911 center. Someone is saying, hey, time is of the essence. I have an emergency and I need help. Yeah. We need to make sure all those calls are heard. Our 911 center is not at the city anymore. It is now a countywide service that is shared and it's out of the Michigan State Police. 
We need to make sure we have services, people on the street. They can't answer the calls. I had um, about two months ago an accident in front of my home. A young gentleman who was a Domino's driver, he was driving the, the vehicle, trying to uh, look and see what was going on. He's paying his way through school. There was a truck parked on the side of the street. And I just, I remember hearing it's a loud bang. And he hit the truck head on. His car turned around. He totaled his vehicle. I went out right away to check on him. It took three hours for police officers to show up. Airbags were deployed, but they had two murders that night and they had a stabbing. So there were so many other things that were going on. And when we have those issues, I understand the priority of the call. We need more people to answer those calls. Yeah. Even though we have Michigan State Police, Michigan State Police to my understanding, their directives do not say that they have to answer 911 calls. They're not in the city of Flint to answer 911 calls. Their presence is important, but we need help on the 911 calls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And helping with the 911 calls is certainly one aspect there, and also getting a faster police response. Yes. Which requires more of a police presence. We have to have. I mean... Mm -hmm. Until we're out there and we get people on the street, I mean, it used to be common. You would see the police and they ride down the street and you'd see the firefighters. Neither one of those jobs I want to do. Like I said, either one, you're going in and you might risk your life to save a life. And the other one, you know, you might be getting shot at. Mm -hmm. You know, there was such a strong presence that people, they thought second before they decide to do something so heinous and to be so bold to do the crimes that they do. In my ward, we've had vigilante style shootings. We've had one on the corner of Berkeley and Donaldson to where three people were shot. One young man was killed last week. I showed up to the scene. That's a young man that lost his life that a mother has got to bury her son. We had a shooting a week before that where a young man was dropped off at the hospital, Stevenson Street, same thing, shot in the face. We had uh, a few weeks before then, a young person was killed in a minivan that was down on Chevrolet in DuPont. So we've got a problem. We've got a problem. The police can't respond. There's no certain time. It's not some of these were nine o'clock, three o'clock. I mean, it's not happening at any certain time because they don't care because they feel, oh, I know the response of the police. We know there's not enough of them on the streets. So we're going to just do, we'll handle it ourselves. How can we bulk up our police presence? Then? Well, one of the things we're going to have to do, police officer number one, because we don't have enough, most of them are actually getting more overtime. So if we're looking at making sure we're balancing that budget, looking at their overtime, if we take that, if they're getting double their pay almost, that can put another officer on the street. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you just we take that pay, divide it by two, put an extra person on the street. We need to yes. be budget-wise. Yes. They're tired, they're overworked, and often right. they feel overpaid. Yeah. They often feel that I'm only making this amount of money because I'm working 90 hours a week. And that's true. 90 hours a week, you're not getting the most fit person that's showing up. They're lethargic. They're tired. They may not be rational and they may not be patient because they haven't been to sleep. They've probably been up on the scene for, for 18 or more hours and then maybe got two hours and then had to come back to work for something else. So, yes, it's a problem. Yes. And so... Bulking up the police presence is one. Do you have any ideas for an alternative, uh, another idea um, towards mitigating crime? Well, one thing is start getting the community involved. You know, talk to your neighbors. We mm -hmm. are each other's neighbors. First yes. thing that you can do is let people know, I see you. On my house, there's eight cameras, and I let them know. There are eight cameras on my house, okay. so it comes to my cell phone. So if you want to do something, don't be shady grady on my time because <laughs> I work right. a little too hard for my money. Yeah. And I talk to people. And because sometimes it's just a small thing. If someone isn't cutting their grass, like, hey, I, I see you're not cutting your grass. Mm -hmm. I need to get that stuff up out your yard. Like, oh, Miss Burns, okay, I got you. <laughs> and it's just being neighborly. Yes, being neighborly. Being neighborly, all that right. we see what's going on. We yeah. need the, the Gladys Kravitz who peeks out her window all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, all right then. Um, Tanya, convince me. Then, if you want to look into the camera and convince me and our viewers as to why we should vote for you. Definitely. Um, one of the reasons that I feel I am not, uh, no one sponsors me. I'm my own person. I'm an independent thinker. There's no one sponsoring me, giving me campaign funds. It's from my own hard-earned dollars. I'm a Flint business owner. I am a stakeholder in the community, residential, and then with my business. I own both of my buildings, my home, and then I own 
my business. I bought them. I paid for them. I reinvested in Flint. I'm asking voters to come reinvest and give me the opportunity to, to help us grow together. It's my responsibility to not only grow and improve the sixth ward, but to work collectively with all the other wards, eight wards included, to make sure we care for Flint. We want our economic development to not just be downtown Flint, but we want it to be the entire city of Flint. We are Flint proud, Flint strong. We are resilient people. We have great opportunities. We need to make sure we're utilizing our infrastructure, making Flint a plug and play city for new development, for new manufacturing, for technology jobs. Let them know we're interested. The council cares. We show up for you and we will make sure we get the job done. I'm Tanya Burns. I'm running for six work councilwoman. I need your vote. Please show up August the 8th for real change and real leadership. I can be contacted at 888 Two five two seven one six zero or eight one zero seven four four two three eight zero. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanya Burns, for being with us today. Thank you, Sharima. It was nice. <laughs> Absolutely good. Well, thank you. It was good, and that is. Our wrap today with our interview with Tanya Burns, but stay tuned. We'll be coming back to you again for more on Meet the Candidates. Goodbye. For now.